Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is the final word. Everton 2, Crystal Palace 1. We get to talk about a Premier League victory. For the first time since May. It's terrifying. It's October tomorrow. But Everton won on Saturday. And it feels good being able to sit here, Jack, and talk about a Blues winning a game. It's incredible, isn't it? it, um, it the feeling had, had gone. I didn't know what it felt like anymore, yeah. but it, yeah, it's um, good, you know, the performance itself, nah, but the win is the most important thing when you've not got one at this point in the season, isn't it? Absolutely, Ped, I mean, feels good to sit down and be able to talk about a win, ironically Everton's worst performance of the season at home, but they've resulted in them winning a the game of football and that's all that matters, isn't it, essentially? Yeah, that's all that matters, three points, loads of games like this. Mm. And uh, it's just down to Everton to, to win them. I mean, fair play. Sean's got the formula there. That's it. Just win them. Yeah. Just win them. Uh, the manager brought Jared Brantway back, which was excellent news, back into the side. We had Mikhailenko back after illness as well. Ashley Young went to right back in midfield. He left Mangala and Decore, Lindstrom and Jai, McNeil and Dom up front. And no real shocks with everything after the defence, I don't think, because I think Everton controlled the Leicester game for large periods last week with those players and it was only really mm. when he took Jesper Lindstrom off and later on and Jai that every the attacking incentive sort of went out the game and um, so well I wasn't surprised he left them in place for this one but we just never got going you know it was a slow start I thought Goodison would be a little bit more upbeat to be honest because obviously we'd had the news of the free can take over earlier in the week and I thought We'd be ready for a kick-off and it'd be bouncing a little bit and it, it was really flat and obviously Crystal Palace come score in the opening 10 minutes and it's everyone starts looking at each other as if to go, oh, where we go again? Yeah, I mean, it's one of them and obviously the Friedkin news was a massive lift to the mm. fan base but it's been a couple of weeks now since that news come out and you're looking for something on the pitch now. You know, all the off-the-pitch news is great, but it's what the club has needed, but you're looking for something on the pitch mm. to give you that lift. And maybe going into the Newcastle game, now we've got that win, maybe oh. that will lift people a lot more. But coming off Leicester, which was another frustrating one, especially one where we had played well for periods and mm. threw the game away under not much pressure I can understand why people felt subdued and then had we started better and got into it and Crystal Palace hadn't took the lead within 10 minutes you know maybe the atmosphere would have started to grow but you have that taken away from you don't you yeah I mean Ped did you feel like it was flat very like quiet I thought like um, it was I don't know it was it's Evan has still hadn't won a game this season in the Premier mm. League and the freaking news has been met with one of you know understandably let's wait caution you know there's got to be caution of course there is because of what happened last time you know obviously what happened last time was for the best but i think we've been down this road before and i think people are just like when it's done it's done mm. and we're not going to get ahead of ourselves and mm. we're not going to start thinking too much about what's going on it's about winning games you park that for now don't you because that's a side issue that could take three months you know that we could be waiting around christmas time for that mm. um so you park that for now, and it is just about winning games of football. And if, again, it's, just, it's all the factors, isn't it? It's you know, it's the weather's not great, and 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 you're going into a game which is three o'clock kickoff. They're not all again. It's a little bit flat out there as well. And I don't know. It, it's it's just hard. I think it's just people are just we say it week in and week out, and I don't I don't think anything's going to change it at this at this moment. It's just people. Just want to see us get a little bit more comfortable, and and because you you sit, you the matching. There's obviously all the build up to it, and uh, there will be that general atmosphere before the game. But when the game starts, you do just feel that nervousness, and you feel it all over the place. And that that's not going to change. It isn't going to change mm -hmm. for a while. I don't think it's you know until we're a lot more comfortable with everything going on around the club. Um, so yeah, I mean it's potentially being a good a good week for us but we're all just a little bit like well, let's just park that for now yeah. do you not think though with under this manager and I don't mean to be overly negative after we have got a win but do you not think there is a general feeling of apathy almost towards the club because it's not 
anger because I think people mm. know we'll be all right, but it's not anger. It's not the hero or zero thing that the manager has mentioned himself because it's not overwhelming love for the manager. And I don't think there's an overwhelming anger as well because people think he will stay up. They're just not very happy with the way we're going about it currently. And I think that's... It's almost more dangerous, almost, because obviously you can get the nasty reactions if there is anger towards the manager, but when people are just sort of like, eh, it's, mm. it will be okay, but I'm not really enjoying this. Do you think that's almost a bit more dangerous for a football club in Everton's situation, when, oh. where the fan base are mm. such a big factor and they are so important for the club? Possibly, but I suppose that might be 10. I suppose the safety net for that is there is a take it well. Mm. It looks like this will happen. <laughs> Obviously, never say never, but so I feel like there is that sort of safety aspect. Maybe what Pez just said there, once that is sort of gone through, then people will start going, right, we want this now. We want to mm. see this from the football club and this from the football club. You might right, you might be right at the moment. Everyone's just sort of like, all right, you know, we're not big get It's like, well, what really can we do? Because people have, Everton have felt rudderless, haven't they? Um, but we did win the game, and that's all we can do. And now, definitely, we, yeah. we're building up to Newcastle now, which is they're not playing great. They've got results. Their results have been better than the way they're playing at the moment. We beat them last season. Let's hope that you know we can use this as a springboard. But we did. I mean, the thing with Saturday is we did do two things we've not done for a while. One, we came from behind, which is the first time we've done it under this manager to win a game. And two, it's the first time we've won a game when the opposition have scored a goal at mm. Goodison since Crystal Palace in May 2022. And they did take the lead. Let's have a look at the stills for their goal. So, again, it's a corner. You know, and again, Everton, it's set up decent, I think, off the corner. You're having a look there. We take it on. It comes in. I think we had a couple of attempts to clear this and didn't. Mm. And therefore, that's why yeah, he was still up there. We just take it on, Ned. Recycled. Okay, I'm not seeing much there. Carry on, Ned. And then it comes out here, and there's not this. We don't get out quick enough to this ball for a start, which is something that we have got. A, it's great saying we've got Tarkovsky in the middle, and he led everything away. But we've let too many crosses come into our box yeah. of late. I'm sure the manager will be saying exactly the same. Take it on again for us, Ned. Now, as this ball's in the air, that was hung up. And I think you're wondering whether your goalie can come. And at the time, I'm thinking, can Pickford come and get that? The answer is no. Look how far away Yeah, it is. no, I know. That's what I mean. When In real time. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I know in real time. So when I watched it back, I yeah. was like, there was no way no. he could have come There's for no it. There's no way he could have come for it. But, but the, he did half come for he it. He did. And then I mean, that's the problem. I think that's what threw me. Yeah. He started to come for it and then yeah. backpedaled. Yeah. And then he never got taken he on for us. He never, he never, got he never ever recovered from yeah, this yeah. stage. And um, You see, it's knocked down. And Gay's just sticking yeah, yeah. a leg out there. And I was really disappointed when I watched it back, how it goes past him on his near post. Because he, he's sort of turned his body side on. Again, just saying it ends up, obviously, in the back of Evans' net. Like you say, when you get to, you get to see it just once, because it... Of course. I don't think they showed it again on the screen and they score, but as it's hung up, I'm thinking... Because I've seen him mm. motion towards it, I'm thinking he's going to come mm. and, and then he backpedals and it ends up in the net and then you sort of question him. Mm. But I haven't watched it again. He couldn't have come for the initial one. But it's that term with almost like his eyes closed as Gay flicks it. I think he could have done better there. But, I mean, there's two I mean, parts of it. Lindstrom makes a mess of on the, the edge of the box. Yeah. He's not strong enough and no. he allows the lad to win the tackle and mm -hmm. it's not strong enough. You've got to be... You've got to brace yourself in yeah. that position yeah. and you've got to be prepared to make sure you get it away or, mm -hmm. or you're, you've got to be fouled, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's not strong enough. And like you said, the ball just when don't get quick enough out to anyone. It's hung up, and it is. It goes really high and yeah. really deep. And Pickford's mistake was, for me, coming off his line. Yeah, yeah. And again, that might be what everyone wants to hear, but it's the truth. <laughs> he, he makes a motion towards it, comes back and never gets reset. I think it's the core he gets beat mm. for the initial header, and Gui just like turns it around the corner because Pickford isn't set. Mm. And I think that's why that's why he doesn't come off his line. Mm. I just. I don't. I don't understand. I, I don't. I. I personally don't understand this argument of like when stuff like that. I don't want to see him coming for stuff like that. I want to. I want to see him coming for stuff like five yards ahead of him, mm. where he only has to take a step or two and he can pluck it out the air or he can punch it. But stuff like that, I don't want my goalie getting involved there because 
He's not big enough. He's not big enough. That. That's just that's mm. just a fact, isn't it? Um, and it was just a, it's just a poor set of events. We've been be- beaten. Um, and I actually thought of, I was thinking about this over the weekend and I, before just around like when we put playing. I thought I think one of the reasons why we've been poor is because we haven't had an own army. I think that's why we've been poor on set pieces. I don't think. Careful. I, don't, I couldn't care less. Mm-hmm. Me, people, I, listen. I'm, a, I'm a, I couldn't care less what anyone thinks. Onan mm-hmm. is a good footballer. Oh, people, yes, yeah. I still, pe- still people cr- criticise and perform for the performance of Villa because they want to be proved right when they're completely wrong. Fantastic football. And last week you said he's absolutely brilliant. Fantastic footballer and give give us in our own box Don't somebody who them. dominated in the air. And mm-hmm. I think we're seeing a little bit of a hangover mm-hmm. of that. Where he he would maybe win that kind of that mm. ball, mm. and I think that's maybe not being registered as much this season. Mm. But I, but I, but but listen, that doesn't matter because he missed the penalty in, in the penalty shootout. So so we'll let people cry well, ass yeah. over. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, Ghana. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Listen, Ghana game missed the, the crucial one later on, but mm. that's like no. But like regardless of the player quality, like you're saying, it's a lot of height. Yeah, right height the team, it, regardless, yeah. isn't it? And that was something you know people often picked up on last year. We had mm. one, on average one of the tallest team. Yeah, then, did, yeah. yeah, tallest of second tallest player goes out. It you are missing that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, of course. And he was good in both boxes, yeah. wasn't he? Because of his height, that mm-hmm. was the thing. Um, you know, we were one nil down. I mean, Tiaki, <coughs> it is a bit. The twist of it, and I and I see a lot of goalies actually think Henderson does the same for McNeil's one. It's sort of like I don't want to get it in the face, and I'm trying to make myself big, but they're not looking at the ball, and that's what Pickford sort of is turning, and it goes past his body. And maybe it is because he started to come and backpedal that he hasn't got tight on that that sort of near post to stop that going in. But goes across him. It's not really much he can do, but don't let it in on that near post. I think he will be. He probably say I'm disappointed with letting that goal in. Mm, it's the difficulty of a smaller goalkeeper trying to make themselves big, isn't mm. it? But that's on him to adapt around that at the end of the day. And mm. look, you know, I'd, like I'd, hang from the balance to make his arms bigger. Well, or? no, but you, you assess it, don't you? And go, look, you know, the bigger keepers, obviously, like someone like Donna Rummer, for example, mm. who's absolutely huge and fills the frame entirely. He can come out and do that because he's massive and he's got the length. Jordan Pickford's a great goalkeeper. I love Jordan Pickford. I'll yeah. defend him to anyone. And I've never subscribed to the idea of, oh, he's too small to be a keeper. But maybe Football. someone of his frame shouldn't be getting involved in situations like that and just look to adapt and go, OK, where's my best chance of saving this shot? Do I just stay in my goal and try and cover the near post instead of trying to come for it is, and make myself big? Are we seeing, and this is to both of you, I suppose, are we seeing, <coughs> he, just, he hasn't started the season brilliantly. He's had a great Euros and he really did. Mm. He hasn't really started the season brilliantly. We haven't as a defensive you know, set up started mm. the season really well. And are we seeing this little bit of indecision because of that? Because last week, I actually thought he could have come and punched Leicester's corner for the equaliser. He yeah, sort of yeah. came forward and went back again. And the two defenders didn't deal with it and things like that. Because on Saturday, he did come actually later on for a couple and mm. caught. He punched one and caught one. And then we had, I don't know why, but some, some of our crowd cheering like as if it was like you know irony that he's yeah. coming towards him like let's not go down that route because yeah. he's, he's not like he's a, te- he's, a, he's a really good goalie he just hasn't started the season brilliantly is that what we're seeing do you think Ped a little bit of indecision just because he might feel he, he could have done better so far this season do you think I'd like I'd like um, someone to ask the manager this week I think it okay. would be nice for someone to uh, you know all the journalists who watch this we can't do it Someone ask him. Someone ask the manager. I don't think it's an inappropriate question. Someone ask the manager. Do you tell Jordan Pickford to stay on his side? Oh, okay. Right. I wonder what you meant. No, no. The question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, and I don't think it's. I don't, is it a tactic for him a to tactic? stay on his line? Is it a tactic? Then we'd know, wouldn't we? We know them. He's he's had a change mm. of goalkeeping coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alan Kelly's retired. Um. So, is it now something they look at? Listen, there are many factors that mm. we can't. The, how often do you see goalkeepers where they do they do make themselves huge and they do and it's almost like a natural thing where the, the head twists mm. when the body twists to make themselves big it might just be part of that mm. I'm a goalkeeper I'm not a goalkeeper good the balls a little bit lighter Andy last week I mean last week that wind and that rain yeah I mean, you, you know what I mean yeah. everything factors in and they might say listen if you see something right there and you can come and pluck it so then come and pluck it otherwise yeah. that that goal in particular. There's no chance on earth 
that he should be coming anywhere Is near that. Because if he comes and doesn't get it, that goal's unguarded. Mm. And, well, we saw Robert Sanchez for, for Chelsea on Saturday come like Superman you know when you watch, Do you know when you watch... Mm. Um, you know when you watch Arsenal now? Mm. Raya, often... I know he does come and get it because yeah, he's a big yeah. goalie. But one of the differences between him and, you know, the fella before him was... He used to come for everything and miss half of them. Yeah. And it just causes panic. Yeah. This fella doesn't, and he just mm. lets the centre backs deal yeah, with well, it. Mate, listen, and mate. I and I'm not listen, yeah. I'm not I just I've watched this enough now to believe that he is being told to stay on his line. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, they would have told him not to stay on his line. I don't think in all fairness to the manager as well, I don't know whether he'd answer that simply because I don't know whether it's it, I don't think you can go out right. in the press and say we tell him to stay in his life because no, you're giving him the banter yeah. to everyone. No, what I mean is though, it's like you can. There are ways of you know. Uh, there are ways of talking to. Do you, you can dress it do up. Do you man, prefer? Yeah. Do you prefer Jordan to to do do something this way or do something that way? Mm. You know, is it at least you, a centre? Do you prefer? Do you prefer centre backs to deal with the ball in the air or rather the goal, than your yeah. goalkeeper? Yeah, that's fair enough. Because he was a centre back and he'd be able to tell you, well, I, I prefer that if Mickey came saying, and cleared us out. Or I but what I'm it. saying is, last season, this wasn't an issue. No, no. Because the centre backs and Onana and Do- 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 Dominic Calvin Lewin it, yeah. were doing the job. Yeah. So no one ever looked at the goalkeeper I'm because sure. Listen. they did the job. If the Corey gets the header first and flicks that on, mm. no one's looking at Jordan Pickford. Mm. That's what I'm mm. saying. It's like, but if Jordan, imagine if like Jordan Pickford goes out to that mm. ball and the Corey does win it, but it drops to another one of their players and Pickford finds himself out of the goal. Mm. It's percentages, I think isn't the, it? I think the reason why I, at the time, thought he could have come and got it was because he did start mm. to come. Whereas if he would have stayed on his line. I'd, yeah, right. I'd have been thinking, oh, well, he, know, he, he can't come for not that. Not long afterwards, obviously... there was another one, wasn't there? And almost yeah. a similar happened, and, and Jaya had to knock her off the line. Mm. And the problem with that is, is that where I am, obviously, where I'm behind that goal. Mm. His fans are having a go at him. And actually, what you don't want to see is people start having their performances dictated to by, by the people crowd. shouting and then going, I've got to come and get... And I think Pickford actually signalled to... Uh, the Gladys Street, like at the end of the half, as, right. as in, like, you know, not like calm down. He was just like, Yeah, I, I can hear, I know what you're saying, mm-hmm. but like, because Jordan's not like the type of person to get into. Not it. like a John Stone. But he moment. did just go, No, he sort of went, Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, sort mm-hmm. of thing. He did throw it hand up. You come and caught a couple in the second and, half. And it's, it is that thing of like, maybe you go in and go, What do you want me to do if it's coming? I don't, I don't know. Listen, there's a lot of these like, fine margins, aren't they? Of course. I yeah. mean, we well, obviously go on, sorry, no, go on. Go on. Well, no, I was going to say you mentioned fine margins. It's not just pick for either because there was a few instances before that as well, mm. like Lindstrom, which for me was the big one because mm. he had quite an easy job there. He could have carried it into the space, but he almost goes straight. And if he goes into the space and gets his body in, he either gets the foul and great, you've took the sting out of it mm. and you've killed their attack, or you do manage to get up the pitch and okay, he'd be on his own. He's not doing anything with it, but he's took yeah, a man with him, and again, he's killed the attack. Clear there, haven't we? But obviously, you know, it was then there was the worry we were behind again and we again, like I just said before, we haven't come from behind and the opposition score and doesn't always bode well for us at Goodison. But I think that the real disappointment for me in the first half was we never really got them on the back foot. We had a moment where McNeil done nearly well, fired the ball across and Calvert Lewin missed yeah. it at the mm. near post and no one's gambling behind. And that, that will do my head in if I'm the management team. I don't know whether they in, they coach that, because I very rarely see one person crossing it and that other one putting it in. But if Linsom or the core gambles behind Don, they've got to tap into an open yeah. goal. And they don't. You actually look, they're almost like, if Don doesn't deal with it, well, so be it. Can't be like that. You're getting yourself tap-ins there. We had another one where it was a lovely little bit of play and McNeil headed it wide and he should have really done better. He made a good run and he looks like he's closed his eyes as he's headed it and put it wide. But they were few and far between. Really, we, and GI, always a, always a threat, picking the ball mm. up and spinning and running at people. We couldn't get the last bit right in that first half. And they were always a threat on the break because, you know, Ezzy has one which I was right behind and I think Pickford might have struggled to get there but Saki puts his head in the way. And then we had the moment where, me personally, I think it's a penalty on Mateta. And we give the ball away, they break. Tarkovsky makes a overzealous challenge, I'll say. Or does a, you know, Dermot Gallagher, who 
I never agree with anyway. Normally, but it's called it a bit reckless. Uh, said Everton were lucky to get away with it. Now I know he gets the ball, but that rule has changed. Where the way it is now, even if you get a bit of the ball, if you follow through and get the man, it, they give it now, don't they? And I'll be honest, it was when he hit it, I thought it's a penalty because mm. I just didn't understand what he was doing. You know, and he hits him and Mateta stays down as well. I'm thinking it's going to go to VAR this and it's going to be a penalty. Do you, what do you think? Do you think we got away with it? Do you think it, was, it wasn't It was a penalty? What was your take on it? it? I think it's a modern penalty. Like, modern day. Look, I, I like a bit of, if you get the ball, then it's all right. And I, I like mm. all that. I'm not just saying it because mm. it's Everton, but you are right. The rules now do cater towards the foul player, don't they? Mm. And I, I think we were fortunate there that... I, it, it would have been a soft penalty, but within the rules, they do Seen often given. get given, don't they? So, mm. yeah, it, it, it was risky from Taki. And, um, yeah, again, like you say, I'd have no problem with that not being a foul. I think that should be the way it is. I think mm. if you get the ball first and there's no obvious intent to harm, then it sounds, but it's within the modern rules, isn't it? The worry was, though, it looked like there was an intent. No, he looked like he tried to do it. He looked like he tried to do it. They'd had a couple of little goals out to the... I was... I'll be honest, I was astonished it wasn't given as a penalty because, yeah. like you just said, mm. he had loads of time to look over that and the VAR, the game had stopped. Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was naughty by Tark. I thought it was stupid, mm. reckless in where he was. Maybe it was outside the box just. Mm. Maybe it was very much on the line. Um, I, I, I thought it was a ridiculous decision to make. Mm. People can say... Listen, the good thing about this is there's an interpretation. You can, you can say it's not a penalty. I can say it was a mm. penalty. Mm. I think... What we can all agree on was it's stupid by Tarkov oh, yeah. to do something like that. Anything, because the yeah. ball was there to be won in mm. a clean fashion. Mm. The Brantwaite kept them up. He dived inside Brantwaite and Tarkov. All, ta- all he has to do is just clean the ball out. Mm. But he doesn't. You can see You can see it. Mm. You can see it on his face. He's going to take everything out. And I just thought that was ridiculously silly for an experienced player. Because then four seconds later, he goes and, and I, takes Eze out with and the I just, same Yeah, he do, well, someone has to take him out yeah, there. And then he goes. And then he goes. And I, as I said, you we, you could sit here all day. And of course, with brute tints of glasses and you go, it's never a penalty. And I thought it was a mm. it was a foul. I thought it was a foul. If he'd have given it, I wouldn't have no, been surprised. I wouldn't have been surprised. Mm. I wouldn't have been surprised. And Glad I would, he never And I would have had a go at Taki for mm. it because I just thought it was mm. really silly. And there was one... Um, a couple of weeks ago, Ashley Young done something similar. No one really talked about that one because it was probably a little bit cleaner. But I, you've ju- you've got to be when you're in the box. You've got to be absolutely certain yeah. if there's aggression involved. Absolutely, because mm. it is part of the modern game. If you take the ball and the man, it's a foul mm. now. That, there's, no, there's no, there's no, there's no grey area, area now. It, there's absolutely no grey area. Mm. And I, I thought we were lucky. It was risky. Mm. But yeah. Did you a little bit of luck? It's like a silly that. situation for him to put himself in, though, isn't it? Because yeah. even if you get away with it, you don't want a situation where the conversation has to be had, do you? No, no. But luckily, we got away with it. And then I actually, saying to you before, Ped, and it was obviously different from the season, from where I was, but that one that goes up in the air and loops towards our goal, and then the referee, it's in the eye, I think. Well, it actually comes from the shot, as a shot. As a shot mm. goes up, and... As it drops in, it's the core is there as well. I think it's either the core or in Jai clears it, and the referee blew his whistle and pointed out to the halfway line. That's what it looked like, and I'm thinking, oh my god, it's gone in, it's 2 0. It was a foul. <laughs> he gave a free yeah. kick, but just for a second, I'm thinking, oh my god, we're 2 0 down, that calamitous goal again. Mm. Uh, luckily, it wasn't, but were you frustrated in the first half that even. There was sort of like no response to going behind. I, I thought we were heading. I just didn't know what we were doing. I thought we were heading. I thought it was. We let them have the impetus at the start of the game. Mm-hmm. There was no. There was no. Uh, I, I said this word loads. I love saying this word aggression. Mm-hmm. Apart from Tahi. Yeah. There was no aggression mm-hmm. anywhere on the pitch. They were. They were just waltzing through our midfield anytime they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, the two defensive midfielders just looked so redundant. There was, we couldn't string three passes together. We were letting them run at us. Um, and there was just no no urgency and no aggression to go out. And I, I think that was the difference in the first half and the second half. And it was it was tr- it was was worrying to watch. Because you're sitting there and you, okay, you're one nil down. You're playing a team that also haven't won a game. No. And again, this is mentality. Been talking about this loads in the last week or so. This mentality of... 
oh look at us we're a relegation fodder team and it's like hang on this could be flipped so easily they're also a relegation fodder team in terms of how they started yeah. but that's not their mentality that's not how they're thinking but I just think sometimes there is this oh what well, was attitude where it's like you're at home you haven't won a game and I'm not seeing anything in the first half to suggest you are going to win this game. And I think sometimes this is what this is the difference with us. Is like, where, where is that aggression? Where's that spark? Where's that player going to win that 50 50? Where's that determination to hold on to the ball? Where's Lindstrom? I thought was a massive, was a massive uh, indicator of this. The one for the goal where he's 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 essentially bottled a 50 50, which mm. wasn't even a 50 50, it's an 80 20 for him, and he's bottled it by not being strong and then there was other times there was times over when he was by the dugout and there was one where he went down and we just played on mm. Pickford the ball went back to Pickford and there was no thought of kicking out he just and it was almost like he was waiting he was going it was like this game's a little bit too I don't fancy this today mm. and it was written all over his face and in every motion he did and it is no one obviously was anywhere near as bad as that but I just felt there was just this feeling amongst the players of just like would well, it'll come eventually if we could keep doing what we're doing it's like no self-pity battle battle for it get out of this get stop feeling sorry for yourselves mm. if you're getting beat one nil you're at home no one's thinking i mean it never even crossed my mind when we were one nil down that we hadn't come back from one being one nil down mm. it never crossed my mind mm. all that crossed my mind is we better do something quick if we want to if we want to get win this game otherwise he's getting sacked because that's the end of it if he, we'd lost that game he was done in mm. my in my eyes no, i think a lot of people and a, in a lot yeah, of people's well, eyes so you're similar. done mm. we've just got a new owner and you're you're gone mate mm. you're gone so you, you can understand why Seamus Coleman done the done the team talk at half mm. time, and that's no disrespect to the manager. Managers have done that for for ages. Talking earlier about Mourinho doing it, mm. letting them all go in, and then shutting the door and staying outside. Mm, sure Sometimes that, that yeah. needs to be done, and, mm. and Seamus will be that person who'll, who'll call this. What are you doing? Mm. And you could see it coming out second half that little bit more, just getting on the ball. The old David Moyes second half, mm -hmm. one nil down, and everyone going. We're going to win this. Well, that, that feeling isn't with us at the moment at this club, and it's why we go back to the atmospheres. But straight away, you could see us on the front foot in that second half going, if we're going to, if we're going to get something out of this game, that's on us to go and be a little bit more determined. And it just isn't there enough in any of our games. And I find that a, a strange trait like from this manager. Like You start the season slow. You start the game slow. Where's the aggression? Where's that little bit of horribleness, that little bit of uh, nastiness that runs that we start on the front foot, engage the crowd, get mm. the crowd up, that first tackle, whatever it is. Just don't see enough of that. Mm. And it's so annoying. It's what's what's required. I thought there was definitely a malaise there of mm. like, here we go again. Yeah. I didn't think it was like we'll we'll be alright. I just thought it was almost like this is the way the season's going. Yeah. We've made another mistake and we're getting beaten. It was Ed, Ed Young's looking at the floor and it was a bit like, woe is us, mm. you know, let's get off. Let's get off the pitch at half time. And obviously some of the fans weren't happy, let them know. And that's fair. I mean, Oliver Glassner referenced it, didn't he? But we did come out for the second half, made the change. Jack at half time took mm. Jesper Lindstrom off, put Jack Harrison on. And like Ped said, there was just a little Harrison straight away went and closed the ball down immediately and they kicked it out for a throw in and there was that little bit of oh look there's a little bit of urgency and then Ashley Young does really well because we go and put pressure on they play a ball Kamada I think it is plays mm. a loose ball Young's on it quickly puts it inside and obviously Dwight McNeil gets it out of his feet and he's got that ability to just bounce one in the top corner and that's exactly what he did and we've got the stills here I think and that's got them for us we have a look here here we go Kamada's on the ball so we do go and do the press taking on for us Ned plays a short see, one see you can see that's the difference now all of a sudden that's the difference. Evan have got five players within that area to go and get it as he waits which is what Lindstrom was doing mm. as he waits Young doesn't wait does really well Nick in go ahead Ned there you go plays it for oh, sorry takes the touch and steps forward as he's out the game then Take it on again. Harrison makes a great, great run mm, at the yeah. bottom of the screen and Kamada tracks him so he's out the way and it goes in and that opens that little bit of space up for Dwight McNeil. Gets it out of his feet here and then sends a and from there pretty much yeah. straight in. 
Very similar to a goal he scored for Burnley against Everton mm-hmm. in COVID at Goodison at the same Great goal Inside of his foot, laser. And that that's the advantage of having Dwight McNeil in them areas. But just mm-hmm. that little bit of input, just go and win the first ball, get in before people, probably on the back of what Coleman, because Coleman sat watching it like we were and was probably fuming because mm-hmm. he can't affect it. And, he's, and he is their captain. Yeah. And he is one of yeah, them. And he yeah. can say you aren't doing enough, blah, blah, blah. That little 90 seconds... And McNeil bends one in the top corner and off we go. Yeah, because in the first half, I thought we had no chance of coming back. Not because mm. Crystal Palace were playing amazing no. and controlling the game, but we just looked like we were going through the motions. Mm. Just resigned to defeat and that, that woe is me attitude, like you mm. say. And we did just need that little bit of bite and that little bit of press. And, you know, Ashley Young does it brilliantly. You mentioned it was a 50-50 more like an 80-20 in mm. Lindstrom's uh, favour mm. for their goal. The same for Eze there. Yeah, he had yeah. all day for that pass, but he chooses mm. to wait. Ashley Young sets off brilliantly, times it really well. Mm. doesn't give him enough space to you know receive it into his feet and then take Young out of the game with a simple sidestep he's right on him then Harrison with the run opens it up completely because Kamada has to go with him and that just Mm. opens up that little bit of space for McNeil doesn't it to just bend it and it's a wonderful strike and obviously a lot goes into facilitating that like Ashley Young's ball Mm. and his run before that and then obviously Jack Harrison's run but it still takes a lot to put that top in, yeah. doesn't it? And those are the positions where McNeil really can affect the game. Mm-hmm. Because you can criticise a lot of areas of his game, you know, mm-hmm. especially when he's playing on the wing, because he has to do more. Mm-hmm. But if you put him in positions where all he has to do is use his left foot, and he's got a brilliant left foot, mm-hmm. that's what he can give you. Well, he tends to sit in that pocket, doesn't he? He mm-hmm. doesn't sit centrally, he sits in the right-hand side centrally, he sits in that pocket, mm-hmm. because then that allows him to go on the inside. And what I really liked was, I liked the fact that... Um, even though he's just scored the wonder goal, he just he just went and got the ball, mm. and he was like, no, you know, beginning of the half, this is how we start. It's one one. We we need to win this game, and I thought that was a really good positive attitude from mm. him as well. And it was a great goal, but it means nothing if we don't win no. this game. Mm. And I, I like the fact that he was. That's what he was saying. I've just scored this wonder goal. It means mm. nothing. Yeah, got to get the three points. Mm. And that was, I thought that, I thought, uh, you know, from that was showed, it showed to everyone as well, hey, everyone, don't dwell on this, get back and let's go again. Mm. And that was really important. Also makes a mockery of the assists, doesn't it? Because like, Ashley Young got an assist for that, even though. <laughs> Ashley Young, Ashley Young, again, Ashley Young deserved the assist because okay, he had right. a good game. No, he did. And you know what? Game. He has more good games than he has bad games, Ashley Young. Say he didn't. A lot of people, say. again, he's another one. Two assists on the run. He's another one. Hmm? He's another one, though. That I think some people have to just get off his back a little bit. Mm. Is he perfect? No, of course he's not. Mm. He comes in and typically does just job. as it does a job. That's all it is. It's a job. I just wish, like against Southampton, the 89th minute, he wasn't trying to give penalties away. But no, he, no, he, you're absolutely right. He you're did have a good right. game. He, did, he had a great game at Leicester last week, and he had a good solid mm. game the weekend. The problem with him is. He's not going to be what we all want, and that's no. the problem. He's not going to raid, fly no, forward, get crosses in. He's not. He's not there. It's the age of him won't allow it. And also, this manager, he does what he wants him mm. to do, which is try to protect, which again makes an absolute mockery of the manager's decision not to take Seamus Coleman yeah. off when he was knackered against yeah. Bournemouth and put him in because he does understand the game. Because he would have done the, the job. And he'd have he would the have done the job. Anyway, let, that's gone. Let's move on. Great goal, like you say, with Dwight. And Everton then got on the front foot. The irony of it is it only lasted as long as the two goals and then we stepped back, but we did, again, another really good goal. Long ball forward by Pickford. If we can see, Ned's got it up. Long ball forward by Pickford. Comes up to the edge of the box. It goes up in the air. Ned will take it on for us. Goes up into the air. And again, Ned, Harrison underneath it, pulls it down brilliantly and takes it into this zone. It was a great first touch. Takes it on again, Ned. And then throws it across him with his right foot. Calvert Lewin, thankfully, he's offside, but because it carries on past him, we get away with it. Goes to that far post. And then Dwight McNeil running in. Great first touch, goes up in the air. And then the second one is volleyed past Dean Henderson in the goal. Tremendous goal. Great bit of skill from McNeil. And we're in front. We're in front, and Goodison erupts and. Yeah, you know, what can, What more can you ask? You, you put the sub on at half time, mm-hmm. good pressure for the first goal, sets the second goal up, and Everton in a good position and to go on. Yeah, definitely. And Jack Harrison was absolutely the right sub to make because mm-hmm. he played a big part in both goals. Yeah. And 
you know, criticised the manager's subs a lot, but that was absolutely the right substitution mm -hmm. and to do it early as well. So, yeah, fair play on that one. Mm -hmm. Does brilliantly again, showing that initiative, getting right onto the ball, doesn't try and bring it back inside, takes a chance on his weak foot mm -hmm. and actually puts a great little cross in. Mm -hmm. And then McNeil's first touch is brilliant as yeah. well because he might have thought the the lower risk thing to do is just try and smash it first yeah, time yeah. and obviously that could have very easily sailed <laughs> right behind the goal mm. couldn't it but you don't necessarily always have the time to take mm. a touch first but he takes a very clever touch sets himself up well and then the finish is there and yeah it all changed very quickly didn't it mm. but i think a big part of that came from jack harrison i Definitely. need to watch this goal again i you know in real time i didn't mm. think dwight mcneil got that touch because mm -hmm. he went to touch it and it looked like the defender got the touch but if the defender did get the touch it's an even better goal mm. because he's, he's for some like you know if he takes the touch he knows exactly how, see, how, how much weight is on it yeah. I, see I, I was with you I thought yeah. that, I yeah, need he just it. did it but I keep, when I watch it yeah. to be honest right it's a flip of a coin yeah, but yeah. because mm. McNeil motions to yeah, push yeah, it, it does. it sort of goes here yeah, and then yeah. he volleys it Listen, I'm gonna because of the first one. I'm giving him the benefits of that for the second. Well, Jack Harrison lose the assist, so yeah, so, so it's definitely it, Jack. So it must be must have then. Jack. It must have been. Um, we'll we'll carry on with Dwight in a minute, but let's have a look at his overall stats from the game because you know he was a key, a key man in this victory. Forty-eight touches for Harrison, uh, for McNeil rather, seventy-three percent passing accuracy, three shots at goal, two of them resulted in goals. One chance creating. You can see on the heat map uh, that area you were talking about, yeah. that pocket off the right hand side and cutting back in. We've seen this last season against Brentford, only it didn't end up in the top corner, but at the underside of a bar. He's got that ability in those areas. This is why I was banging on about him playing in that position last season. For me, I can't fathom why we thought why the manager was stuck with him as a left winger when we have Jack Harrison, who is a left winger. McNeil is the only one in our squad who's got that capability. Wait, McNeil was there was no assist given for his goal. Maybe they thought it was. Just, just I'm just again, just yeah. cleaning it up. Just, just trying to clean it, it up. Okay. Right in that area, he's the only one capable of banging one in from twenty-five. The Corey probably without being disrespectful, wouldn't it? The goal from there, you know, catch the, the that is being yeah. disrespectful. Know, by the way, but he's a better runner than he is. He doesn't get the ball out and bang it in, does he? Well, he's not, a runner. Not from twelve yards. That. He doesn't know. Um, He's had one volley, bloody hell, even the broken clock. No, I mean, I mean the Corey. That's what I'm talking about. The one-on-one -on -one I'm talking about. Oh, oh, God, yeah. We'll come on to that. <laughs> the only chance I'm we just had. building it up. The only chance we had in the second half. <laughs> no, I think Abdullah the Corey is, is, will go and hunt out things and he arrives in the box and has got on the end. But McNeil is someone who can get it out of his feet. We've seen it numerous times for us now where he's, he's had shots from that distance and he scored goals or he's created goals. And that's why... Even a few people was were disagreeing with me last season that he could play in that role. Because but I just think he's got the eye for a pass, he's got the left foot. And being more sensible means the pitch is open for him. I think in wide areas in the Premier League, you've got to be either you the speed there yeah. or you've got to have unbelievable ability to go both ways so you can throw defenders. He's very, very one footed, but it is a very good left foot. But that pocket he plays in on the right mm. is almost the perfect mm. halfway meeting point of that mm. because, you know, people often say, oh, what about playing him on the right so he can come inside on that mm. left foot? But again, it's, it's the physical right, quickness probably. and it's the mental quickness. And, yeah, you know, yeah. although he would be coming inside, you still need the right foot to play on the right at the end of the day, don't you? But operating in that half space almost between mm. the number 10 and the right wing spot means he can just turn in easier. He's not having to receive the ball and try and take a man mm. on. He receives it into his feet and he can turn very quickly. And I think that plays to his strengths. And listen, that's what you've got to do with this squad. Because while it's certainly nowhere near as bad as some of the teams below us, no. there is limitations to the squad. There is mm. players who have talent and players who have abilities, but they don't have a well-rounded game overall. It's a lack of pace in it as well. That's the big well, yeah, certainly, But it's, it's taken, OK, well, what have we got? And how do we get the most mm. out of that? Even if he's not perfect overall... What role can we design for this mm. player that plays to his strengths and doesn't ask him to do anything I he's just not think, capable of? Ped, we, when we've seen the Corey in that role, his key strength was arriving in a box and grabbing mm. goals, but those goals have got less and less. He doesn't, he doesn't pick the ball up in the right areas. What, what's Dwight's occupying a space that's between the centre midfielders and the the centre backs. Mm. Centre backs don't know, don't want to pick him up. Mm. Centre defense, centre midfielders don't want to go that deep. 
And if he's just sitting in that pocket and he's picking the ball up there, he has got the ability. Mm. But if he's got the ability to do that, then also defenders might try and engage him. That might open sp- space up for Dom to run down the side. Mm. So it, that's why Harrison. Technically, he, technically, he is a very good footballer mm. when he's on his left foot. Absolutely, you know, yeah. we know that. We mm. know that's what that's his ability. Yeah. And if he's playing in there, other people will cotton on that and go, "Well, we've got to somehow stop him because he will get time and space." Mm. By playing in that hole, and that's he's, he's so dangerous on that mm-hmm. left foot. I, mean, I think he's got like the most assists in the league now. Most of them are because it's of his set pieces, because his set piece delivery is so mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. So he is, he's, of course, he's not like he's not rapid, he's quite mm-hmm. one paced. Mm-hmm. But there's been a lot of footballers who were just quite one paced because they've got something a little bit more, and that's the the craft in, in one of the feet. But it is like Jack said, there, isn't it? It's and this is what you, any coach should do, really, is like, look at what you've got and look how to get the best out of them. But the simple fact isn't that he's a better left winger than him. Yeah, so he's never going back over there. He shouldn't be going back. No, even, no, that's even what I'm if saying. He wasn't because it's he, you're not doing him any no, favours no. on the left because he, he's not, he hasn't got the pace to go on the but outside. That's what but what's good is, though, that crosses. sets... Because Ndai is playing on the left and mm. won't be moved from the left. Mm. That makes it a lot easier for of a manager. Because mm-hmm. I think Daish is that kind of manager who will go, Ooh, what's the... we've seen that with the subs already, mm. taking Dai off, moving back to the left. Yeah, yeah. You've got to get out of that. Mm. And luckily for this game, he did get out of his mm. own way. Mm. Managers are the creatures of habit. They want to go back to default. They want to go back to what's always worked for them. That's why we sit here and think this... Dice has got limitations if he wants to move Everton forward because he can he get a, can he become something that he's never quite been. Well, mm. Jai on the left means that Tony <laughs> McNeil has to play centrally. So mm. straight away you're saying right that's your role, mate. No one's really going to take that off him. Mm. The core is not going to take that no, role no, off him. No. He just isn't because he's it's diminishing. And then it's other people, then isn't it? It's up to other people yeah. to take that role off, and whether that be at times a split striker, whether it's someone like Breuer, Lindstrom. whether it's Lindstrom, who, who that's his position really, whether it's in Chimitty Jack, long it, term, Chimitty. You know, you don't. I'm not saying all the time because they're more forward thinking, but there might be games where you go actually. We're at home and we mm. want to play this way today. Well, you because drop into a three and it's a yeah, and exactly. he's the advance. Exactly. Out of the three. So you you want the manager to have them. I'm sure he does. You want him to have them options. And mm. listen, McNeil's come up big for us at the weekend. And Brilliant. Two great goals. Another player who I thought did really well on Saturday. Me, me and Jack spoke about it on the live Mangala. You know, mm. the first we come on a Villa. I don't even know if he touched the ball, but he just the game passed him by. He was there physically. Yeah. Sal dancing at home in the cup, he, he didn't have a good night. But I thought at Leicester last week there were signs he mm. was getting it. And then on Saturday, his best performance mm. by some distance. Let's have a look at his numbers before we discuss it. 52 touches of the ball, 88% passing accuracy, 2 out of 2 dribbles completed, won 9 out of 13 duels. I think that's 5 interceptions. He also won 100% of his tackles, which was 4 out of 4. Yeah. Had a very good game in that, as in terms of what he does getting it, he, he links the plays clever in possession. And I thought he'd he, he done that role really well, Jack, at the weekend. No, he did. He's certainly getting more involved into the games, isn't he, over mm. the last two fixtures? And it, mm. it's nice because he's he's a presence in the midfield. He's not running the show and he's not, no. you know, an all action destroyer, but he's winning the tackles you'd expect him to win and he gets the ball out his feet quick. and mm. Yeah, he's a nice little tick over midfielder who does the basic jobs you want a midfielder to do in that setup, mm. moves it on quick. And yeah, I've been impressed with him over the last two games. It's been a big improvement over his first couple of fixtures. And I think a big part of that's probably spending more time around the team and more time in training because obviously mm. he came in deadline day and he went straight into the internationals, yeah. didn't we? So it, it took him a bit of time before he'd really settled into the group before. Um, even after he'd moved a couple of weeks before that. Yeah, we're full management speak there before he settled into the group. Uh, what what did you make of him, Ped, on Saturday? No, I think he's I think he's probably just made himself one of the starters mm. in the team. Because mm. he's got a he's got the perfect mix. Premier League experience. I think the manager likes that. Good age, good mm. international player with Belgium. Um and he's just neat and tidy. Mm. He knits everything together quite well. Mm. And when you look at the other options, you know, J- James Garner, young, but you would think will mm. be will will come into the team for different can come into the yeah, team, that's yeah. not an issue. 
I just think Anna Gay getting a little bit older now, but mm. obviously can still do the job. And Tim, Tim Erebunum, who is a little bit different, I think, a little bit more, as I said a few times, I think he can come on and play where Dwight's playing, mm. but just be a little bit deeper and keep the midfield compact. I don't mm. really want to see him coming off the bench doing what he did last week. I don't think that's quite in his repertoire yet. Mm. To be like, you know, Going to trying to see a game out and sitting. I think he wants to get on the ball and move forward because yeah. that's the kind of player he is. Mm. And I know a lot of people are disappointed. I know a lot of people don't quite get why Tim Boonham has been dropped. But I think if you look at his away, away performance performances, they just haven't been there. And mm. I don't think we're a team that can be going, well, you can play at home but not away. I don't think we're there. Mm. I think you'd have, to, you'd have to be a better team than we are to start I doing stuff like that. For him, for his developments, I think... It's important to have and get as many points on the board as quickly as we can so that I'll stay the bleeding off you, captain obvious there, but to, to make someone help someone progress like that, the manager obviously is looking and going, Well, we're not winning games, and he's been in the team and, and he'll, they need that experience. He'll, he'll play, play games, he'll play games, absolutely. Yeah. He'll play games, and he's played a lot more minutes than he should have so far in terms of what we thought we were getting when he came mm -hmm. in. I think just people just have to, and we're not, it's not like no one's stifling his development, by mm -hmm. the way. It's going to be, it's it's on him. And this is what people always forget, right? Mm. There's midfielders now fighting out for like two positions, yeah, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, there's five. what? There's five of them mm. for two positions. Mm. That's good. That's brilliant. Mm. That's, that's exactly what you want. Mm. And there'll be times in the season, especially in December when there's a game every three days mm. where it will be, you come out, you go in. You play an hour, then you play the last 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. The way it worked out on Saturday was perfect. The way we, the subs, he got the he learned from the Bournemouth game and mm -hmm. he got the sub spot on. Leave mm -hmm. the attacking players on and change the heart of your team. Yeah, yeah. Where it actually counts the, the engine room of your team. And that's mm -hmm. where these players are going to be so important. Mm -hmm. If Tim Tim Boone wants to be in this game, in this team, then make sure it's saying and you are absolutely on it every day mm. you are getting in there and you're saying to the manager I'm better than him I'm better than him mm. I'm better than him and if you're not better than them become better than them mm. yeah that's what you want it's 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 not to be it's not to be afraid of no but he's, he's in a very comfortable position isn't he because people obviously might worry that oh he's not getting game time now when it's his development but he's came in he got an opportunity to play more than he would have mm. because we've got injuries we're going to go into a busy schedule over the winter and you know we have got a lot of midfielders but James Garner's cover for right backs exactly. Corey's cover for the 10 whether you like it or not he does different yeah. roles he can play in mm. there the Corey's out of contract in the summer mm. so is Garner Gay and Mangala's on loan so he's in a great position it a boon him I think Absolutely. we can all just you know we if he we want to see him obviously because he's a young prospect who's come in and done well and we all like that but he's here for the long run he's already impressed and it doesn't have to be right now for him talking to someone who's who had to settle and get in and then has become a mainstay we had them back at the weekend it was of course she had a brand way to haven't played all season so far Came back in on Saturday, and after the opening 20 minutes, when he looked a little bit rusty, he just grew into the game, and I thought uh, he had an excellent game in the end. And let's have a look at his numbers, and it'll reiterate that 46 touches of the ball, 84% passing accuracy, 100% of his tackles uh, completed, or oh, sorry, 100% of his ground deals as well, and completed 100% of his clearances. Um, I think he won three out of six aerial. Uh, challenges as well got better and better as the game went on Pedden just calmed everybody down didn't he back, in, back into mm. it straight away wasn't he mm. no no issues and ev gives everyone a lift when you go into the ground you're on the team sheet mm. um, I don't think there's any grey area when it comes to Jared Brent and the manager the manager uh -huh. knows yeah. the manager knows that he's better than Michael Keane mm. I know in his, after the match he, he did sort of say he felt sorry for Michael Keane but there is, there's nothing to be sorry about. This lad is a top, top player, and once he got, you know, once he settled down after ten minutes or so, the passes, the the the, the aggression, mm. uh, just everything was was there that we saw last season, and he's only going to improve. Mm. And you straight away, he's he's not a normal 22, 23 year old defender. He's organised and he's pulling people into shape, and we're going to be so much better for it for him being in the side. Um, and yeah, he's worth. He is. That's why he's worth all that money mm. that we wanted for him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great to see him back. 
Yeah, he's, he's brilliant, isn't he? He just gives us so much more balance. And you just mentioned there, for his age, he, he doesn't show that in experience. I think he judges everything perfectly. Mm. He knows when to go. He knows when to try to go almost man-to-man with someone and take them on physically. Mm. There was one instance last season where I can think of where he misjudged it, and it was the Haaland one. Mm. And that's Haaland, who's you know, yeah, the best yeah. physical striker in the world. Mm. And that was the only time he tried to sort of duel someone and yeah. lost out rather than trying to go with them yeah. and jockey them. Other than that, that's one instance against the best striker in the world. Other than that, he judges everything and spot on. He's mm. all dead on young shoulders, is the saying, isn't it? But he's Absolutely. physically brilliant, gives us so much more balance in that back four. And him and Tarki stylistically complement each other very well. Absolutely. Great to see him back. I mean, you mentioned it before, Ped. And Palace, after we scored the two goals, we did sort of sit back and... It was weird, the two goals weren't fitting with the game. We had an eight-minute spell where we were on top and then it went back mm-hmm. to them having all the ball. But we did have one great chance to make it 3-1. <laughs> yeah. The core, eight burst and through. I thought he was offside, but I've seen it again. Dom done Dom really well. Dom done Dom brilliantly. Really. Put him through. And I don't know whether it, in training... I actually had a go at Zach and have a go. I had a discussion with Zach on Saturday morning about... Yeah, go. I didn't. I didn't. I had, he played brilliantly Saturday I had a discussion with him about just having a little glance at being aware he's around you. Mm. I, I then look stupid on Saturday nights, you know, when elite footballers don't do it. With Corey, right, Dom does brilliantly, puts him in, and all he's got to do is just have a look. That look throws quick. Mm. Get it out your feet and just hit it. And if the keeper saves it, he saves it. I slightly disagree with you. But that's fine. No, that's no, I slightly you. disagree with you because yeah. his second touch... <laughs> I know, no, no, I, I, I well, agree with your sentiments. I agree with your sentiment for your child, <laughs> right? His second touch was absolutely had a, it. It is. moved an inch off his foot. <laughs> if he put a yard on that touch, he was, he was the fella up. wouldn't, the fella would still be trying to chase yeah. him now. It's oh, it was just, horrendous. Seeing Dom do it, a few no, I know, I know. And then seeing him do it, it's like, just get it out your feet. And it's, if the Henderson saves it, no issue. If yeah. it goes wide, no issue. But that, when do you allow them to get back? Because you're, oh, it's almost under your feet. He done that in a game last season, didn't he? So last year when he got put through, yeah, he done did, exactly yeah. the same thing. It's that, like a belief. Yeah. Like that was our only like our only real opportunity to kill the game off, wasn't it? They mm-hmm. had Irabunum had the header over the bar. No, we didn't stop the green in the last game. That was our only real chance. They had two attempts where I was slightly worried. One went right across our yeah, six yard yeah, box. Yeah. And it hit someone and went it ran away from their striker mm-hmm. for a change. And then obviously they brought Henderson up at the end and but I know on the highlights that was a highlight. Mm. Yeah. Then took a free kick and Henderson just ended it. Like, yeah. I mean, to be fair, to be I mean, fair, we, we did done well together. We did manage the game. No, we did. But they well. had all the ball. No, didn't I know, we? I know, and that's the dangerous side when you've won when you've won three or four, or five games or yeah, whatever. And into you're the all season. right with it. That's you're all right. But we managed the game quite well. They did have a couple that were knocked down the, in our box. Yeah, if it had fell for them, we we would have been. But we went the subs. I thought we got the subs. No, we did get the spot on. He learned the lesson from the last. It's like almost like he listens to fans. Um when it comes to th- some things, isn't mm-hmm. it? Uh, he got the subs right and he put the changed the plays in the middle of the park yeah. rather than give us that energy. Yeah, and and that's it. But and he didn't take Dom off. That, thankfully as well. Oh no, I thought Dom. Had I thought Dom, Dom had the last it, ten minutes. Yeah, I thought Dom. He actually looked looked well well up for it and and had loads left in what the tank with the half times of the last ten minutes then. Oh, well, thank you. Know, yeah, maybe, poor maybe, maybe, maybe give him service. Yeah, the poor afternoon. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, this overall stats. Everton two, Palace one. Eight shots from the toffees. Seventeen for Crystal Palace. Just two on target for Everton. Five for Crystal Palace. Yeah, no surprise there. They dominated the ball as well, but Everton have won the game. Like I said, ironically for me, Everton's worst display at Goodison in the Premier League this season, and we won the game. So long may it continue. Many more crap performances with three points, please, uh, moving forward. Um, yeah, so there you go. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Good win, relieved with the win. Can we beat Newcastle on Saturday? That is the the big question. Uh, we're going to carry on on Trophy TV Premium and Prem- four Trophy TV Premium members. Say so I don't even know what to say when Everton have won a game. I'm broken. Um, we're carrying on in a bit, but otherwise, make sure you like, subscribe, do all of that, and we'll see you later. <laughs>